Wolverhampton Wanderers had suffered heavily over the past couple of seasons. Relegation from the Premier League was followed with another the following season. With a squad still awash with Premier League players and wages, 2013-2014 became one of the biggest seasons in Wolves history. They had to stop the rot and, if possible, bounce straight back into the Championship. The club started the rebuilding process with installing a head coach to help them get back to winning ways. Kenny Jackett had just left his position at Millwall that he had held successfully for six full seasons, which included two League One playoff runs in as many seasons, with the second attempt ending in success and the further four seasons cemented in the Championship. Jackett clearly had the credentials and the experience and he set about remoulding the side in preparation for League One football. The first job was to trim down the squad and the wage bill by releasing some of the players. Sylvain Ebanks-Blake, Stephen Hunt and Christoph Berra were all allowed to leave, along with club captain and local boy Carl Henry. Other first team squad players released had included Doris De Vries and Adam Hamill. With a large part of the first team squad released, the fans expected the influx of players to fill the holes. But the manager surprised everyone with just one pre-season signing of note in Welsh international Sam Ricketts. The second time Kenny Jackett had bought the defender, having signed him as new manager at Swansea back in 2004. The manager showed the faith he had in the experienced campaigner by immediately naming him club captain. The season began in front of the Sky Cameras at the home of football against another giant of the old game, Preston. Tremendous opening weekend. The crowd here at Deepdale, by about 5,000 travelling supporters from Molyneux in a chance for Wolves here to get in behind. This is Sacco. Dangerous when he's on the ball, Sacco. And Sacco still, it's a good save. Always looks as though things are going to happen whenever Bakary Sacco is on the ball. He's floated in, goalkeeper, not with the most convincing punch away and cleared off the line. Press the north end and breathe a sigh of relief. Options left and right, Davis starting to make his move through the middle here and that's brave goalkeeping to deny Kevin Davis. He showed some pace, didn't he, here? Stop from came mate. To have an opening goal between these two sides. Deep down today. Oh, deflection! Could have gone anywhere. Very nearly was the moment. Jackett's men were back in the northwest for the trip to the coast to face the Shrimpers in the Capital One Cup just three days later. Oh, can he get there to pull it back? Oh, worry there for Roach. Well, first real bit of good fortune for Morecambe there. That ball ricochets off the post. Ismail. That's more than promising. Griffiths arrives, and again Wolves hit the woodwork. Wow. Wonderful skill from Ismail. He's certainly looking bright and bubbly at the start of this second half. Keen to show his talents. It's tremendous work again. Oh! And again, Wolves are denied by the frame of the goal. Well, we're looking at it and we're thinking, is it going to be one of those nights for Wolves? And is it going to be Morecambe's night? Because three times now, rattled the woodwork. Wonderful skill, and I think he means to do that, you know. The first one was a cross, but he's going for the far corner there. So desperately unlucky. Doherty got back, and very important that he did so.
it's going to be Williams! Oh, that's a piece of perfection from Ryan Williams! Wolves were sad to report the passing of club legend Dave Wagstaff. The winger had recently been inducted into the Wolves Hall of Fame and will forever be known as a giant of Wolverhampton football. A minute's applause was observed at the beginning of the match. He's got time to bring it down and find the bottom corner. Off the mark for the season, Lee Griffiths. But he was given the freedom that the whole city of Wolverhampton here by those Gillingham defenders. Look at that. But the technique was superb. Oh, good hit. It was some absolute venom there. Right behind again here, Wolves. Oh! Flashed right across the face of goal. Griffiths. Oh, and it could be two, and is. Fortunately, the way it fell for Evans. For the former Newport County man. Makes it 2 0. Here's Sacco, who makes no mistake. And they're running riot here. Right in behind. Oh, that was a really poor challenge and a penalty, no doubt about it. Salim Griffiths. That's his second of the afternoon. Exquisite penalty into the corner. Mid-August and the manager was still keen to bolster the squad and brought in highly rated midfielder Kevin McDonald from Sheffield United. The Scot had already netted this season and would prove to be a valuable addition to the squad. McDonald was on the bench for the trip to Bristol to face the fellow relegated Robins. He's just touched the stars with that free kick. There was no stopping that. He is absolute class. That's Kevin Doyle now. It's dipping from Doyle, and it had to be dealt with by Fielding. It's Baldock. And J. Emmanuel Thomas. He scores again for Bristol City. Every game he's scored in now. Doherty slow. This is Wagstaff. And now Baldock. Sam Baldock. Akimi with the answer. The Wolves struggling to clear. Baldock again. Same result. Akimi with the save. Bagari Sacco. Toying with Bristol City. Kevin Doyle. Bristol City just cannot handle Bakary Sacco right now. Such power and pace. And fielding with a smart save there. Doyle. Bakary Sacco. What's in his mind this time? Sacco. It's Doherty. Goal. Doherty celebrates what may just be the winner for Wolverhampton Wanderers. This is Cassidy, and Cassidy to surely wrap it up, no! Well, how did that happen? History was made in the next fixture as Wolves faced Crawley for the first time in their history, determined to keep their excellent start to the campaign going.
That's Kevin Doyle. Who no, no, isn't? An academy player. Lovely dink ball towards that far post. And this time, Sigurdsson does find the back of the net. Walls have turned on the power. And Crawley have felt the full force. Now we talked about the possible combination between Sigurdsson and Doyle before kickoff, and it's a really deft header from the centre forward, but uh, Kevin Doyle does brilliantly well. He just delays playing the cross, and he takes it right to the byline. He probably just kids the fullback. Am I going to cross it now? No, an extra touch, and that's a wonderful cross. But yep, Sigurdsson has to do really well, adjust his body and not go for power, just guide it, just nod it into that far corner. It's a really intelligent header, but great work from Doyle. Good combination play from the two strikers. Absolutely everything right, he keeps himself on side when he breaks forward. You can see there's the right back, Isaac Simpson on that far side playing everybody on. Ismail does the right thing, wonderful ball in, just Sigurdsson can't catch up with the ball in. Ready happening to his left, Alexander leaves it, Adams, with the use of his body. Now it's Jamie Proctor, and it's Billy Clark! Crawley have snatched it late on! An equaliser against Wolverhampton Wanderers, and that goal has been coming. Here's for another twist here. Kevin McDonald. Surging run. Was that handball? It was. It's a penalty for Wolves. The assistant referee signalled, and the spot kick has been given. Paul Jones will be happy with this at all because Lee Griffiths, there's no finesse here, he just goes purely for power and he goes underneath the goalkeeper, he'd read it, he'd gone the right way and he'll be absolutely distraught, he's not saved this. Great fighting spirit helped claim a valuable last gasp victory and the momentum of the Crawley game was taken to Vale Park for the first fixture there in 13 years for Wolves. It's Griffiths, deadly! In front of the travelling Wolves fans. Dickinson couldn't really sort his feet out. Griffiths did. Wolves looking threatening again. Sigurd Arson! It's a smart finish. Beating Neil, that is near post. Who couldn't keep it out. Wolves carrying a threat again here. Neil out and McDonald sweeps home for three. Paul Vale just can't cope with Wolves running at them like this. This is Loft. Tom Pope. Unbeaten in the league with four wins from the first five games of the campaign was a great start for the club and saw them occupy second in the table. Wolves were pleased to add to the squad as the summer transfer window closed, picking up Scott Goldborn from Barnsley to help bolster the defensive options. There was more sad news with the passing of another Wolves favourite in Barry Stobart at the end of August and his wife Maureen and other family members paid their own tribute in front of the North Bank before the game with Walsall. Goldborn went straight into the starting lineup for the first fixture in over 10 years against the club's local rivals. Saka, it's good football from Wolves here. And so to be an end product, this certainly is. Michael Linton, great moment for him. Simple tapping, Wolves 1, Walsall now. It's a delivery and it's 1 1. Hemmings is head up. Well, what a delivery that is. And the referee's seen an infringement in there. And it's going to be a penalty for Wolverhampton Wanderers. 
Sacco denied, but on the rebound, make sure. Time running out. This is Hewitt. Two-two. The two-two draw brought about penalties, and after misses from Westcar and then Taylor for Walsall. It was up to David Davis to slot home the decisive penalty to see Wolves through to the next rounds of the JPT. Much like fellow signing Kevin McDonald, Scott Goldborn wasted little time in making a goal scoring impact on the Molyneux faithful to help record another impressive victory for Wolves. Bakary Sacco moving up the gears and finding Goldborn. Goldburn! Well, he didn't mean it, but it's his best moment in the wall shirt yet. There's Kevin Doyle. Lee Griffiths. Doyle waiting in the box. Doyle fouled by Griffiths. Well, Swindon just couldn't keep an eye here on Kevin Doyle. He's the only man wearing old gold in the penalty area, and Griffiths found it. Gesson wants it back, and Gesson trying to hold off Danny Bart, and does, in style! Swindon give Wolves a tap on the shoulder, and say we're still here! Sigurd Arson. that's Kevin Foley! Mason! Fantastic goal from Mason! But surely it's too late for Swindon! The situation surrounding the transfer of Roger Johnson was resolved when he moved on loan to Sheffield Wednesday. Although the defender returned to Wolves mid-season, he was again loaned out, this time to Premier League side West Ham United for the remainder of the season. The Saddlers were out for revenge just two weeks after losing on penalties to Wolves and the local rivals earned a shock victory to condemn Wolves to their first league defeat of the campaign. This one whacked. And the strike! Oh, goodness me, that would have been one of the goals of the season so far. It's a wonderful solo run. Sacco makes something happen here. Sacco fires it across the face of goal. Nobody there in a wolf shirt to finish it all off. And Sacco! What a save. What a free kick. And goal, that would have been. Free kick is a dangerous one. And Walsall lead a Molyneux. Jacket wanted to shake the home defeat off as soon as possible with a trip to face Shrewsbury and former Wolves manager Graeme Turner. Wolves, though, hadn't beaten the Shropshire side in three league attempts, dating back to 1982. Well, oh, that's charged down and almost a perfect start for Wolves. Sigurd Arson. Now back with Sacco. Cut out well by Wheel. Plenty of spice between these two. Plenty of Wolves fans living in the Shropshire area. Here comes Shrewsbury. And Akimi dropped out smartly for that. There's Goldberg. And a header just off the post. Sigurd Orson with it. Oh, Shrewsbury attacking again and looking threatening here with Reach. 
Reach wants it back. Well, how's he missed that? Did that just happen? It did. Oh, header off the line. Or was it with a hand? It looks like it was. Ten has been sent off. Handball right on the line. Bakary Sacco! No messing about. Six minutes left. Sacco strikes the walls. Both Lee Griffiths and Bakary Sacco would make it five goals for the season to defeat a United side struggling under new manager David Weir. Decent try, and it came in down well to his left. Sheffield United looking to crank up the pressure here. The backing off walls, and it's a fine strike, and it came in once more, this time to his right. Well, 20 through. Once again, Carl McKame is keeping Wolverhampton Wanderers in this match. Griffiths, oh, and it's a skewed effort. King's delivery. He's not far away. Anywhere will do for Wolves, down the line for Sacco. He's got power, he's got pace, and he's got the ability to pick out Griffiths! Brilliant breakaway goal for Wolverhampton Wanderers. His fifth strike of the season, a little bit of luck. What a play to him. Oh, what a goal! What a goal! That is what Sacco can do. That is an absolute monster strike. Just one defeat in the month, but it displaced Wolves from the automatic places in the league and highlighted just how tough a division the Skybet League One would be this term. Despite the transfer window closing, the manager was still trying to make moves to help improve the squad and brought in Millwall regular James Henry on loan until January. It was a move that Jacket, his former manager at Millwall, would make permanent during the winter window. Henry went straight into the starting lineup for the away game against Colchester. foot here, that's Gilby, good save from Akimi. he's having a fabulous season in the Wolves goal, and Akimi, it's more comfortable to stop this time, Doherty, Doherty, it's a good powerful run forward, and then was he taken out, the referee says yes, and sheer endeavour won this penalty, Challenged by Martin Taylor. Lee Griffiths picks his spot, finds his spot. Walls take charge of this game. Goldman again. And glanced just wide by Danny Bart. Doherty. Pull back for Lee Griffiths, who sweeps home. Doherty involved again, forward from right back. He found Lee Griffiths, who did the rest. feet at this level now and there's Kevin Doyle who sorts his feet out and makes it 3-0 to Wolverhampton Wanderers he could have left the club but decided not to 
this is Garbutt. Garbutt wants it back. Garbutt gets his back. And Hakimi. His palms are warm. He's not too sure where the ball is. And Colchester looking for a penalty. And Colchester get a penalty. Ball just bounced away there from Hakimi. It sears, and Hakimi does what he's been doing all season, saving Wolves. The Johnston's paint trophy game with Notts County was preceded by a minute's applause in tribute to club legend Peter Broadbent, regarded by many as the most talented player to ever wear a Wolves shirt. There's McAlinden. Now it's Price, Henry, Goldborn. And turned off the line by Little, who got back in the nick of time. He could see the danger. And he positioned himself superbly. There's Lee Griffiths now. The referee has pulled it back as Price was setting himself. Will be a free kick. And that might just be the catalyst for Wolverhampton Wanderers to push on. That move was the best of the match for them by a country mile. What can he see here? It's Lee Griffiths! That's how close he was! Well, the crowd around the ground, some of them thought it was in the ripple of the net. And unfortunately for them, it's the side netting. We will go to the lottery of penalty kicks. We also remember have won their last three penalty shootouts, including in the last round here against Warsaw. Sigurd Dawson, too much elevation. Again, he looked confident when he strode up to that. Here comes the experienced Kevin Foley. Wolves need to hit back here. Kevin Foley, it's another big miss. And it's falling apart in the penalty shootout for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Now this is a must score. James Henry making his home debut for Wolves tonight. They need this. Henry kept out by Fabian Spice. It's not County's night. Wolves had a decade-long unbeaten record at home against fellow Midlanders Coventry and looked to get back to league action with a win at Molyneux against the Sky Blues. Bakary Sacco. There's Lee Griffiths. Murphy was there to greet him. Every time Sacco has possession, the Wolves fans are on their feet. Doherty, and a smart stop by Murphy. It's Bakary Sacco looking to cause problems. Back in by Goldburn. Danny Bart, this is Lee Griffiths, never in doubt. Molyneux rises to acclaim their front man again. And once Danny Bar got the header on that, once Griffiths was all alone, there was only going to be one outcome. And it's crept all the way through here to Phillips. That's a beautiful finish. Lee Griffiths was in a rich vein of goal scoring form, and he would add to his tally against Oldham, making it five in five games and nine for the campaign as Wolves swept aside the perennial League One side. Oldham boxed in. It's making it difficult for them to get out of their own half. It's a good strike. It's a good save. And a pouring rain here at Molyneux tonight. It's a corner from Saka. Set back in. And it's not far away. 
on the head, say it all. Bakary Saka. Great ball in. Oh, the goalkeeper's fumbled it. And fumbled it into the path of Henry. And the former Millwall man with his first warm hand to Wanderers goal. This is where they're so dangerous on the break. And a mistake allows Griffiths in here. And Griffiths does what he does best. Wonderful finish. Oh, and Akame reacts well. An effort that was straight at it. Griffiths has great skill and power as well. Looking for more goals, well down to Wondrous. Saka, and he's in the mood. He is unstoppable. Power used again by Bakary Sacco. It's as if he had nowhere to go. Is it to be an end product here? It's a good save. Griffiths goes down. Search of a penalty. Nothing comes off it. They have just carved open all the athletic here. Griffiths is on sides, all on his own. Lee Griffiths to take it over the goalkeeper. He did just that. The month came to a close against last season's surprise Capital One Cup finalists, Bradford City. Meredith. Some read. This is De Vita. The beater again! Bradford City hit the front. He wasn't giving up on that. There was the first ever off the line, and the Vita slammed home the second. Now it's Griffiths. It's ricocheted into the path of Henry. Well, an element of fortune about how the ball came his way but he didn't hang around <laughs> Bradford have seen off the danger for now but it's coming back their way Henry and Stearman Wolves have turned this game around on the Bradford City goal again, Henry. It's Henry, and that wasn't far away. Looking to be a good acquisition was James Henry. Bakary Sacco. Now it's Griffiths. Lee Griffiths. We got them down to meet it. The slip against Walsall and the JPT defeat aside, October had been another impressive month. Second in the division, with the game in hand over those around them. Jacket had put the club in an excellent position to succeed and bounced straight back to the championship. The manager was not, though, about to rest on his laurels and set out to record a victory in the club's first game against Stevenage in their history. Sacco's delivery, Kevin Doyle! It's a simple finish in the end from Kevin Doyle. All about the cross from Sacco to perfection. Sacco again. Ball here for Sigurdas. It's an awkward one on the turn and back to goal. Vicious hit from range, and it came in against fingertips to it. Dangerous once again here, Wolves. 
Oh, it's superb defending. Fine ball in. Billy Griffiths will know that he should have scored here. That's just deceiving him. Flight stays down. It's two now. Nine minutes to go. Henry has just wrapped it all up. It's had been an impressive start to James Henry's Wolves career. With three goals in as many games, the midfielder and De Kenny Jacket was flourishing. However, it would be regular scorers Sacco and Griffiths who were on target against Carlisle. United defence has been called square here. Bakary Sacco! He packs a punch! And he sends Carlisle crashing to the ground. You just can't let this man run at you. There's Robson. Shown the inside route by Ricketts. Now it's Prince Buabin. Buabin! Sheer class! A calm head in the chaos. Oh, Carlisle again labouring to get the ball clear, and this time the post is struck. The post saves Carlisle, and then Gillespie does. They were hanging on. Now it's Henry. Goldwyn ushered forward from left back. There's Bakary Saka. Goldman. Oh, dangerous ball, and it's in. Lee Griffiths with the header. Oh, the in cross of danger written all over it, and Griffiths got to it, and it just crept over the line in the end. There's David Amu. Amu deflected off the post. Carlisle have done a good account of themselves in this game. And here they come again. That's Prince Buaben. Was he pulled back? Yes, he was. Lee Evans. Grabbing the shirt of Prince Buabin. Liam Noble on the spot. And Liam Noble picks his spot. Oh, the more direct route this time from Wolverhampton Wanderers. And it almost paid off. Goldman's cross. This is Bakary Sacco. And curl towards that far post and no takers as it came back across goal. And Carlisle United have just about seen off the danger. Once again, the head coach was working his magic in the transfer market and was able to draft in out of favour winger Michael Jacobs from championship side Derby County. It was another loan move that after impressing was made permanent in January. Jacobs was only on the bench though, as Wolves headed to Meadow Lane, looking to exact revenge for narrow defeat in the JPT earlier in the season. It's an edge inch strip today. Let's put some pressure on this Nuts County goal, and it's a good save. But the strike was a really good one from Henry. Just on nicely, Griffiths. Oh, it's coolly done, and he saved the goal at the end of it. It's a little too intricate, maybe. And 
Lunderless played in. And he backs Lunderless put it in. What a moment for him, his first Wolves goal. And they have to break through 14 minutes from time. Griffiths is all on his own at the moment, but he does have space arriving with Sigurd Arsene to put the game beyond doubt. Post denies him and Wolves the second goal. Racing through Sigurd Arsene here, Bielikowski beats him, but not the woodwork. The FA Cup, like the other cup competitions this campaign, was short-lived, with Wolves falling at the first round stage to Oldham after a replay. With cup competitions done for the season, all concentration was put on promotion and a test against another team vying for the top spot, Brentford. Kevin Doyle picking up the baton for Wolves. And that's a perfect ball for Lee Griffiths. That would have been an absolute stunner. Excellent pass. And Griffiths going for that near post. Couldn't quite get the better of Button. Look at Wolves again. It's Griffiths again. And Button with a big left hand. Make sure that didn't get past him. Jacobs. Now it's Griffiths, faced by McCormack. And he's having plenty of efforts here, Lee Griffiths, but as of yet, no real reward. That's Forshaw's cross, trying to pick out Donaldson. And McCormack! And well, that's a fantastic stop from Akimi. McCormack crashing in. It was a point earned against Brentford, and the club followed it up with a convincing win against Tranmere. A shot count of 23 to 5 helped to illustrate the domination of Jackets men. It's an ambitious effort from a fair way out. Where are the home side going to make the breakthrough from? Is it to be going to see Griffiths here? Oh, the goalkeeper's made a huge error. Owen from Williams will not want to see that again. Lee Griffiths, 12th of the season. Gift wrapped. to drop Seco's delivery and it's the second goal and just before half time Wolves double their advantage it's Edwards he's off the mark for the campaign really good header it's a great through ball and the chance for three oh Well, it really should have been. Wolves had only been beaten once in the league so far. 18 games played and just 11 points dropped from a maximum 54 available. The end of November, though, brought with it the club's second defeat of the league season, this time to Peterborough. Well, it's found Bakary Sacco, who almost found Lee Griffiths. And Leshnik getting down to it. It's Boswick who blasts the way through. 11 minutes to play. It could be the winner for Peterborough. The club had spent November flirting with the top of the table, but finished the month second on goal difference only. A gap was also beginning to grow to the teams below them, Wolves have put themselves in a position to succeed and finishing the year well could prove crucial psychologically. Unfortunately though, this would be the point in the season where the club would experience back-to-back -back defeats for the first time, 
as MK Dons took all three points away from Molyneux. Second. Chats from the water. It's denied well by Martin. Put it all right. It's a fine save. It's off the tempo. The intensity levels a bit more Wolves in search of this opening goal. The whistle has gone against McDonald's. Team. To be sure, though, the MK Dons goalkeeper. Saka. Finds Carruthers. Threats it through for Bamford. And MK Dons lead and Molyneux. It's a wonderful finish. Comes the challenge. Oh, still got it, Wolves. How have they still got it? Fired over. Beaten a Molyneux already this season. Doesn't happen too often. Oh, how about that from Reeves? Ben Reeves with a wonderful hit. Oh, just unable to find that bottom corner. It's a fine effort, and it's angling always away from goal. The pre-Christmas trip to Rotherham was a real cracker for the neutral. The Wolves pulled together in the second half to rescue a point from a two-goal deficit. James Henry standing over this. Plenty to pick out, including Danny Bart, the local boy who's looking to lead his club. Out to the darkness, has scored here for Wolves. Pringle's corner. It's Pringle again. And it's Dicko. Pringle. He got. He rises the highest. Pringle, lovely ball, Dicko is there again, Wolves in need of something, they really are, and the referee has given them a penalty, Michael Oliver, what's he seen here, is it power or grace from Bakary Sacco, power, Wolves, have hope here. Away by Ricketts. Now it's Griffiths. And they've worked this nicely, and it's Henry on the surge. Griffiths to his right. It's Henry! Wolves just wouldn't let go. They wouldn't let go. And they've worked this beautifully. Henry had Griffiths for support. He didn't need him. That's Bakary Sacco as Wolves look to try and win this. Griffiths. And the goalkeeper was almost caught out, but not quite by Henry. Wolves now needed to come out fighting on Boxing Day and get their title ambitions back on track. And goals at either end of the match ensured they were back to winning ways. To make it a very Merry Christmas. All the Hampton Wanderers and Molyneux today. Getting behind crew here. And the header is an absolute bullet from Michael Jacobs. Three minutes. What a start. The man on loan from Derby County with a commanding header. It 
Yes, he's played in, and he's causing all sorts of problems for Crewe in there. The post comes to their rescue. And then the effort from Henry blocks. It's Rui back to goal. Waited well. Deflection. It really falls to. They ended up on the roof of the nets. As he makes Lando look to leap it over the goalkeeper. This is Henry. Griffiths, yes! That'll do, that'll wrap it all up. Wolves two, crew now. The year came to a close with the visit of top of the table, Leighton Orient. The first time the teams had met since back in the old Division 4 in 1988. There's Pakari Sacco. Jacobs, Van Slo unable to get to him. Now it's Kevin McDonald. And there's room here for Ebanks Landell. It's Ebanks Landell! He smashed it home! And in this massive game, it's Wolves who hit the front in the opening five minutes. Look at that. Steven. That's Jacobs. Larkins down to make the save. The Orient goalkeeper managing to keep Wolves at bay. Jacobs, what's in his mind this time? He's managed to find Bakary Sacco. Now it's Henry. Henry's cross, it was dangerous. And Cassidy unable to convert. He's looking for this vital second goal, and it's Jacobs on the run. And in front of the South Bank, he couldn't quite provide that second goal. Sacco. Orient is stretched here. It's Kevin McDonald. A clear run to goal. A tame finish, though. And Larkins manages to get to the rebound. around here that's Dean Cox and Beaudry Orient level a quick free kick has done the trick that's good hunting down really good hunting down and Wolves hunting down a second but it's like the amount of bodies they had in there they couldn't quite convert it. December had been a tricky month and the club had dropped to third. However, they were still just a point away from the top of the league. The first half of the season had gone according to plan, replicate their points total in the second half of the campaign and they'd be there or thereabouts. The new year kicked off with a tricky test at Tramnir that ended with 10 men apiece on the pitch. for Robinson and three for Lowe as he dragged to the floor there by Stearman outside the area Stearman's in some big trouble and it's red walls down to ten men I think he can have any complaints ten. just to try and pick out Ryan Lowe on the stretch and he has scored 34 minutes on the clock, Tramia leads. Jacobs, and Jacobs still, good save from Williams. Good football from Wolverhampton Wanderers. Shot down to 10 men in search of an equaliser. Oh, a 
must say that is reckless from Wallace and a straight red. And he can't have any complaints. So that is dangerous. That is a shocker. Towards Griffiths. Jacobs. And still. Towards Seco. And that's a goal for Edwards. Ten minutes after the restart of Wolverhampton Wanderers are level. Williams got a hand to it. Into the ground, into the net. Griffiths. And the curling effort, Williams parries it out. Decent drive from Davis. Exactly what he wanted to do and find that far corner. Matches over the festive period and beyond had not brought the expected amount of points and it would get worse before it got better when Gillingham snatched a late, late winner to deny Wolves any points from their trip to the Priestfield Stadium. And this is Danny Kedwell! And that's how close Gillingham were to striking at the heart of Wolves here. McDonald. There's Goulburn. McDonough looking to open doors again. Jacobs. Jacobs looking for Griffiths. Fabulous stop from Nelson, but the flag is up. Great save in any case. Lovely football. It's a brilliant ball from Jacobs and Griffiths. As he tends to do, just playing on the shoulder of defenders. I'll tell you what, he's unlucky to be flagged offside. Stuart Nelson didn't know that the flag had gone up. And terrific save. Really, Griffiths should be going back across goal. The flag had gone up anyway, but still a really smart stop from the Gillingham keeper. Final chance, maybe. It's pinging around McDonald! Gillingham have knocked Wolves clean off their feet! The club had recorded one win in seven games, not promotion form. They needed to restore the winning feeling and keep it. The road to recovery started back at Molyneux against fellow promotion chasers Preston. Chance for Wolves here, and it's off the line. Wonderful defending from King. Still playing off hopefuls themselves. McDonald. And Edwards get that. Yes, he can. 28 minutes. And Wolverhampton Wanderers take the lead. For just the second win in eight games for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Preston looking for an equaliser, and the Woodway denies them. Joe Garner, so unfortunate here. This is a test up. Done with well by Preston, and Rudd with the save, and then fired over. The way that Wolves are hounding down Preston North End. Griffiths has nicely worked. This is Henry. And Henry can save from Rhodes. And it's another one. Lee Evans. He hasn't scored since August. And the 19 year old puts clear daylight between Wolves and Preston here. from Buchanan, it's a deep one, Davis wins it back, Kevin Davis again, and that's Gallagher, Get away by McCary.
Nua Dicko had been a Wolves player at the tail end of the ill-fated 2012-2013 campaign and this season on loan at Rotherham, he scored twice to help the Millers to a 3-3 draw against Wolves. It had been a bumpy ride with the Wolves faithful for the French-born 21-year-old, but Kenny Jacket invested wisely by bringing in the young forward-thinking player to add depth and firepower to the already strong squad. At the beginning of the game against Bristol City, it was a tribute to former goalkeeper Bert Williams who passed away. It would be Nua Dicko's day as he repaid his manager's faith with a brace on his second debut. Bristol City. And this is Dicko! And that's a perfect start to his Wolverhampton Wanderers career. Bought to score. He does just that. Oh, is that a penalty? The referee points to the spot. It's Sam Baldock, it's a ruthless finish. He's been flying this season. It's sloppy from Bristol City. And they could pay the price again here. That's Evans. And deflected in, was it? Well, Dicko claims it. A second goal for him just before the break. Sacco. Now Kevin McDonald. This time it's Henry, so fleet of foot. Dicko goes down. The referee waves away. The penalty appeals. Was he right to do so? This is Bakary Sacco. Trademark goal. And if they're not out of sight, they are disappearing fast now. Five goals in two games would become eight goals in three, as Wolves brushed aside another team to see out January in some style. Dicko, it's a nice layoff. A perfect start to the second half, should they? Get something from this attack. Ball for McDonald, and it's in. Kevin McDonald with his first goal since the end of August. And the breakthrough at Boundary Park for Wolverhampton Wanderers. It's a terrific finish. the Wolves supporters and get it back here Dicko McDonald Henry and it's another one Jacobs emphatic and that will be all three points for Wolverhampton Wanderers wonderful football superb finish to wrap up the match not finished yet Wolverhampton Wanderers Dicko Dicko's cross parried and in flag stays down Henry gets in on the act staring at a third straight win now simple finish January had been a month of two halves, but it appeared to be that the club were over the dip in form that any team would go through during the year. It hadn't affected their league position and they sat just four points from the summit. The departure of long served with loan moves for Kevin Doyle, Kevin Foley and Bjorn Sigurd Darsen, who moved to QPR, Blackpool and Mulder respectively. In addition, the striker Lee Griffiths moved to Celtic the Scottish-born striker had netted an impressive 13 times this campaign, 
and had helped Wolves attain a good position in the league. The club brought back former player Leon Clark. The 29-year-old striker had begun his career with the Old Gold before moving around the clubs and league. But after a career best spell at Coventry, Kenny Jacket invested in the Wolf Runnian to bring him back to Molyneux. Clark went straight into the starting lineup to face mid-table Bradford City. And Doyle going flying in. The referee initially turned his back to it, but up comes a second yellow and a red for Doyle, who is sent off here. And we haven't even had half an hour. Daft second challenge when you're on the yellow. said he tried to make inroads and he almost did as well it's a thumping drive there's Bakary Sacco Sacco trying to catch out McLaughlin Bakary Sacco now it's Kevin McDonald Side footed home. Wolves finally find a way through the terminal of Bradford. And Bradford have got that neatly in. It wasn't too far away. As Derby set his sights. Jacobs. Now Bakary Sacco. Dicko's in the middle. And it goes in. Sacco and Dicko combining again. And it just about got there. And perfect weight on that pass. And just stopped on the line. Wolves' fifth victory on the spin would come courtesy of a Michael Jacobs brace to continue Wolves' unbeaten league record against Notts County, dating back to March 1991. Sacco. So here, Sacco. It's a good football from Wolves. And that's Jacobs! Meeting Goldborn's cross superbly. 17 minutes. Wolverhampton Wanderers take the lead. Patience personified from the home side, really. Just about kept in. Arriving late. Which Jacobs. It's good to have won a league game in Molyneux since 1991. Get even worse for them here with this attack. This is Sacco parried out. It's a good stop from Bielikovsky to deny Bakary Sacco. McGregor has a good challenge. Sacco. It's the break on here for Wolves. Sacco still. All on his own. Good save from Bielikovsky. like he's in the mood today, Sacco. Sacco, knew it Dicko, should have scored. Still, a one in that sketch is still in this match. Oh, Jacobs, it's squeezed in. in the corner they come again flooding forward is there to be an end product no it's this time he couldn't take the opportunity presented to him Jacket's men rounded off a superb month with another convincing victory their sixth in succession 
with just a single goal conceded in this run. Paul Shaw amongst those standing over this. And it's moved to Alan Judge. Hakimi got plenty behind that, as did Judge. Kevin McDonald. Oh, it's flicked in. It's James Henry right in front of the Wolves fans. McDonald getting to the byline. And Henry with a little touch. There's Savile. McDonald put a full stop to that. There's Bakary Sacco. And now it's Jacobs. Great goal from Wolves. Terrific counter attack. Great weight on the pass from Sacco. Jacobs with the touch. And then the finish past Button. Golden. It's done well. Great link of play with Sacco. Golden. This is Jacobs. Terrific goal. Wolves are making a real statement here. And that goal had class written all over it. Victory over Brentford was vital and it helped leapfrog the Bees into second in the division with an identical record to the team on top. With just one significant exception, Wolves had two games in hand over the top team and in their current form this could prove crucial. March kicked off with the visit of Port Vale. A new month but a similar story. Victory for the old goals and a clean sheet to boot. It's a deep cross and it's off the woodwork. Dicko couldn't follow it up. from one side of the pitch to the other. This is Sacco. It's still Sacco. Deflection. And in. Bit of luck for Wolverhampton Wanderers. It's looped away from Neil in the Port Vale goal. Sacco on the edge of the area. As it's played in right across the face of goal. Devilish delivery. Sacco, Louis Dicko is in the centre, and options in there as well, further for Wolves, and it should have been taken. It's a fabulous ball to find Ricketts. Ricketts is delivery, but for Dicko, yes! 73 minutes. Wolves finally get that second goal. Dicko is all on his own at the moment. And Dicko might want to do it on his own. Oh, it's brilliant! Two in two minutes for Nuri Dicko. His fifth goal in seven games on fire. Just get more. It's a penalty. Dicko for the hat trick. Denied. And Dicko again. And in the end, Paul Vale can scramble it away to safety. A Bakri Sacco strike and a newer Dicko double had seen off Port Vale in the previous match. And the pair would be at it again against Walsall as Wolves recorded their third 3-0 win in succession. There's Sacco. That's a great room for the cross, and he's done just that. That's a top save from O'Donnell. Had to plunge down to get to that. Good stop.
It's Jacobs. Warsaw now down the right hand side. Henry's ball in and Dicko converts. It's six and seven now. Warsaw are having a fine season of their own and uh, try to strike back here against their near neighbours. McDonald. Goldburn's cross. Now it's Henry. Henry! And bundled in by Dicko! Henry's cross here. Striking the upright. And Dicko, right place, right time again. Dicko with the leap. Henry. This is a position of promise here for Wolves. It's Bakary Sacco! Now that is how to finish a game off. Not to be outdone, Bakary Sacco is on the double against Swindon. And Leon Clark also got in on the action as Wolves travelled to the county ground and earned their ninth win in succession. This is Sacco. That's good play. Just need to get it away. Swindon struggling to do that as well. Burns clearance wasn't great. Fighting. Oh, Sacco. So, so easy. Nobody picking him up. What a start for Wolves, nine minutes on the clock. It's a terrific pass, and a chance for a second, and the outside of the post. And denying Wolves that second goal, particularly for Henry. To set a new club record. Nine successive wins will bound to Montres. And here goes Dicko. And Dicko, two. 19 minutes. The way that Sacco here has just carved open Swindon Town. And Dicko did the rest. Go ahead. Chance for Wolves to try and break away on the counter attack here. Since left and right, and Saka right through the middle. Chance for his second. Oh, it's brilliant. They are carving Swindon Town apart. Well on the way to nine successive wins, and that club record. Great control, oh, well played, Smith. That's a really good finish as well. Touched on, no, oh, it's off the woodwork. And claimed by Akemi, this is a really good spell for Swindon. Just looking to see out the game. Maybe a fourth. They've got the fourth. Leon Clark in injury time. Wrapping it all up. Nine victories in a row and brought with it 25 goals and just two conceded. It was an incredible club record of 27 uninterrupted points at a key point in the season. Quite simply, Wolves had put the destiny of the title in their own hands. 
All good records, though, must come to an end as the club played out a scoreless draw against Shrewsbury. That's Bakary Sacco. It's carried all the way through here to Dicko. Henry's there for the pullback. Here is Henry. And the goalkeeper got to it, but Goulburn, he stopped. And he got to this. And palmed it straight to Goulburn. McDonald. Jacobs. Tackle well, but it's ricocheted through here to Bakary Sacco, who couldn't find the answer. That's Sacco again. And it's gone all the way across goal. And Clark couldn't get to it. Frustrating afternoon for Wolves. Wolves' first visit to Broadfield Stadium didn't go according to plan. Despite taking an early lead, Crawley rallied to claim all three points. Henry for Wolves. at the moment. Henry again. That's a go and scores. The most convincing from Jones in the Crawley goal. Wolves have that winning feeling again. Play through. And who wants it? That's Simpson. Oh, and a stumble by Tubbs, but it's been put in by Billy Clark and Crawley at back level. Just two minutes or so after going behind. Right over the top. Oh, what a finish, what a finish. Matt Tubbs. It was Wolves' first loss in 10 matches and a trip to a resurgent Sheffield United and a new manager Nigel Clough was probably the least enticing fixture. But the players proved once again that they are ready for the fight and had the quality to succeed. Sheffield United roared on by this bumper Bramall Lane crowd. This is Freeman trying to make room for the cross. He did do an Akimi, that's a fantastic stop. How many times has he done this this season for Wolves? Making sure School couldn't get to the back of the net. Henry, oh, it's dipped dangerously. Well, Howard looks around, but he was beaten there by the dip. James Henry. That's where it dipped. It's gone all the way through. Leon Clark. Clark not giving that up. Now there's Henry. Tenacious play. And Henry not rewarded. Well, Clark wasn't giving up, was he? And then Henry just took charge with one swivel of the hips. That's Jacobs, perfect ball to Henry, these two really are trouble. And Edwards, there's the second for Wolves. They are closing in on a return to the championship. Wolverhampton Wanderers are smiling again. The club returned home to face Colchester just three days later a club that Wolves had never lost to at Molyneux and they needed desperately to keep that run going. Oh, it's a devilish ball in and it's gone all the way in. And Jacobs will be claiming this one. 
Want support, back pass, and Edwards is in, and it's 2-0 Wolves, and it's an absolute presence. Seizing on a terrible back pass. Wolves in the mood. And this is Clark, good save. And Henry will say thank you very much. It's three. And we're not even at half time yet. It's Woods Gilby. And Colchester back in this match. Nobody was picking up the run of Gilby. It's a fine header beyond the K, mate. Complaining from Sears, and they've got another one back. David Wright. Tense finisher, Molyneux. Onside. Here goes Dicko to wrap it all up. Dicko, and still, yes! I think it's crossed the line. It will count, and that will be that. The month came to a close with the club's first ever trip to Stadium MK and a chance for Jackets men to exact revenge for defeat earlier in the campaign in front of over 9,000 travelling supporters. Jacobs. It's Jacobs. Well, Martin is the coolest man inside Stadium MK then. Is this the moment for Wolves? It may well be, and Henry stopped by Martin and point like range. And of Lucy's only just been yellow carded. And he's about to be red carded. And Carl Robinson will not be happy at all with his player. Henry's cross. Chaos inside the MK Don's penalty area. Wolves are pushing and pushing here. It's McAlinden. They've finally done it. Nine minutes left. And they find a way through this resilient MK Don's defence. It had been a strong march, all told, and the league table proved it. The club ended a month on top of the league for the first time this campaign. They were well clear of second and still had at least a game in hand over the rest of the challenges. February and March had shifted the focus from securing automatic promotion to securing the league title. There would be another new ground to add to the all-time list of stadiums for Wolves. However, a first trip to Broadhall Way wasn't as fruitful as the fans would have hoped against the league's basement side. Chance for Stevenage again, and it's a K-May to the rescue. The smart stop. Switched on, and the acrobatics, that's out of the ground. Stevenage fighting for the lines down at the bottom. Stopping resistance so far. Wolves will not give up, though. Save from Dan. It's the side top of the tree to crank up the pressure even more. Chance again. Opportunity is not taken for Stevenage. We down at the bottom, scrapping for points. You need to start taking them. Or is this to be the moment for the breakthrough? No. Chris Day. 
The draw at Stevenage wasn't disastrous as title challenges Brentford were also held to a goalless draw at Sheffield United. But there could be no slip-ups back at Molyneux and a score to settle from defeat earlier in the season to Posh. This is Dicko. Now Sacco. And Leslie managing to get everything behind that. He had to as well. The big Austrian called into action. Leslie doing the defending, but. It's coming back at Peterborough here, it's Sacco, that was a lovely ball, lovely ball from Sacco. It's Jacobs, whistled over the crossbar. Oh, it's a thumping header from Danny Bart. In front of the South Bank. A moment to remember for the local boy. And the ball has stayed in play. This is Ricketts. Ricketts! And Lesnick down smartly. Can they conjure up a miss? Well, it was almost a goal, it will be now. Edwards right on the scene. It's Dicko. Now, was he pulled down by Boswick? The referee says yes. A penalty for Wolves. Bakary Sacco, it's Sacco, what's unbelievable! Wolves were edging closer to promotion and would claim it in the next fixture with a dominating display against 10-man crew. Wolves looking to wrap everything up promotion-wise here today. And it's a good save. Garrett's getting down well to deny Jacobs. Kitts. This is McDonald. McDonald deflected it in. Just what Wolverhampton Wanderers were looking for. Right at half time. Wolves are on their way up. Donald goal. Something Wolves on their way. And there's uh, an incident here right on half time. Looks like Chuksanike is off. Edwards. Fine ball. It's into the corner. Edwards is the man of the moment. And Wolves are bouncing back at the first attempt following their relegation last season. With automatic promotion secure, the club turned their attention to securing the league and they would take a big stride towards that goal with a thrilling defeat of Rotherham, courtesy of a former Miller, Nua Dicko's hat-trick to atone for the brace he got for Rotherham against Wolves earlier in the campaign. O'Connor's corner, and Rotherham take the lead, Kieran Agard. There's Bakary Sacco, and it's bundled in by Dicko, right on the line. Those two at it again. Well, come all the way through here to Dicko, he wasn't going to miss that. Dicko scores for Wolves, of course.
This is Golden. What's in his mind here? It's Edwards! It's a third for Wolves! They went right through the heart of Rotherham. Swung in dangerously. A guard trying to make a nuisance of himself. A guard has sneaked it in. Rotherham United are back at the table. This is Edwards. Edwards in dangerously to Dicko. He's been a fabulous signing, and it's a hat trick for him. Where's this game heading next then? It scores! Rotherham are not letting go of this. Tavernier deflected and this game takes another amazing twist Wolves surging forward again that's brilliant from Ricketts 5-4 well that's how to win a game now it's Dicko. Dicko all the way. Kevin McDonald. Mayhem and Molyneux. Absolute mayhem. What a game. And it would prove to be a key victory for Wolves. With just three games to go until the end of the season, Wolves were six points clear with a much better goal difference. It was felt that one win should be enough to secure the title. A trip to Brisbane Road to face third place Leighton Orient gave Wolves their first shot at securing the league crown. Oh, Bart getting up and Stearman's in there and Wolves have the lead. The team on the title trail strike first here at Brisbane Road. Well, as well as having the qualities of being able to pass and keep possession, they also possess three or four really big lads and more importantly big lads that want to attack corners and free kicks and look at that Danny Bart is the one that causes all the panic in the Orient defence Sacco hoping to explore a bit of space Beaudry didn't deal with it Sacco might 2-0 they're edging closer to the League One title, thanks to Bakary Sacco. Well, it's just highlighting what we've been saying, that Wolves have looked a threat. They look like they've got more of a cutting edge to them at the moment in this game. And this is a simple goal into Sacco. He's not picked up, he helps it into towards Dicko. Baudry doesn't deal with it. And Lua Dicko voted for his goal scoring. Shows great awareness there, just cushioning that header into the path of Bakary Sacco, whose mission was just to keep this down. Bouncing ball, hits it into the ground. No chance for Jamie Jones in the goal, and a very, very avoidable goal. He's got support. But providing it, high and hanging. Hakimi in trouble. It's Mooney. It's Dagnall. It's Cox. It's in! Exactly the start of this second half that Orion wanted and needed. It's Mooney, it's Dagnall, it's Cox, it's in. It's been coming. It really has. Clark in there. Dangerous! Oh, it might go in now. Akimi, but Mooney! Incredible! That really is extraordinary. Edwards, Henry might take this on, you know. Oh, he does beautiful, sealed in style. 
A magnificent strike from James Henry. And that ties a little ribbon on the cake. Yeah, it certainly does. What a way to seal the deal. What a large part of the extra time that we've had, they've been keeping the ball and trying to run the clock down, but once he gets half a yard, this lad, he will take aim. We've given encouragement. What a win, and it was a victory that secured the league mathematically, as Brentford could only draw against MK Dons, handing the title to Wolves, their third third-tier title in their history. A trip to Coventry's temporary home, six fields for the penultimate league game of the season, and despite having the league title secure, Wolves put in a battling display to earn a draw and secure a century of points for the season. Alfonso with the strike. The fabulous following from Wolverhampton Wanderers today here in Northampton. Still, they don't have anything to cheer about. We'll hit the new Dicko. And now Sacco. And Edwards! There is the goal! Six minutes from time. It's a terrific delivery and it's in! The final game of the campaign brought a carnival atmosphere to Molyneux. The fans were out in force, golds and black lined the streets and stadium and the club wanted to end the season on a high against all but relegated Carlisle. That's Sacco. He's looking to finish the season with a flourish. And it's Ricketts! Now oh, he's becoming prolific! On this special day for this special club, Ricketts fires them in front. It's Dicko. Strong on play. Now McDonald. There's Goldman. Goldman picking out the cross. Collar struggling to clear. And the header from Jacobs makes it two. Wolves on their way to the championship. Carlisle on their way to League Two. Well, there's the further punishment here for Carlisle United. It's Bakary Sacco. And now it's Dicko. And it's Edwards who couldn't quite find the finish. Sacco. Now it's Goldburn. Dicko's in the middle. Dicko! Normally so, so deadly. Goldburn. McDonald moving up the gears. Dicko is there in the middle. It didn't reach him. It does now. And that's the result. A thunderbolt. Finish from Dicko. A victory was a great way to bring the curtain down on this successful season. All that remained was to get their hands on the precious trophy.
final league table made for excellent reading. Over 100 points amassed and a goal difference above plus 50. The campaign was exactly what was required from the players, fans and management and helped to put to bed memories of back-to-back -back relegations. Wolves were back amongst the victories, back on the road to recovery and looking strong for 2014-2015.